So this morning we're going to uh, do another little bit of uh, engraving. Here's the basic finished pattern here. And I've got the basic pattern engraved. Now I'm going to be doing some shading. That's the purpose of today's video. But I wanted to show you my setup. This is a B&D flange. Uh, I'm not sure what year, probably late 20s, 27, something like that. And I've, I've uh, built this um, jig that I'm using for um, to hold it. And as you can see, I've, I've, I've uh, made it so that it fits onto this wooden disc. And I have, I have a few screws in it just to hold it in place. Now, what, what, what's helping me with this here now is this engraver's vise. On the bottom, I, I connected this little piece of wood um, so that I could clamp it into my uh, engraver's vise with these pins on, on both sides so that you can see how I can hang on to it. The vise itself, uh, it spins this way on this axis here and then it's round on the bottom in this round cup that holds it so that I can now move this into any position I need to do my hand engraving. So that's my setup. The, the tool that I'm using this morning is a, uh, it's a standard fine point hand engraving uh, tool. That's a palm tool, and I do palm pushing to get my wriggle cuts to work uh, to bring out the, the, uh, the detail. So without further ado, let me set up the camera in the stand, and we will get to engraving. All right, here we go. I'm just, I, I sharpen the tool, and I just touch it to my uh, thumbnail to make sure that it's good and sharp. If, it, if you feel it pick on your thumbnail, you know you've got the tool as sharp as it's going to be. And that's what you need. So here we go. Here's a little bit of detail that we're going to cut. As you can see, I turn the work into the tool itself. And hopefully that gets the detail to come out for me. I'm trying to see if I've got a real good angle here. Let me bring that out just a little bit there. Maybe now you can see a little bit better. So some, this tool is very prone to slipping, so I have to go a little bit easy with it. So if it does slip, I don't do too much damage. Although I have ways of fixing it if I do. So I'm engraving, uh, this is raw brass. We had the plating removed for this. This is Mark Rogers, uh, number one uh, B&D tenor banjo. And this is the flange for it. And I'm doing a little engraving. And this is the details. Of the... Um, the graphic design that I came up with for it. Usually each piece that I do is a custom designed um, design. It's a custom design that I use. So each one that I've done, I've probably done 30 banjos or so in my career. Each one is fairly unique. And I've done a lot of other little tiny, uh, not tiny, but other pieces, armrests, tension hoops, so on. Now once I'm done engraving, what I'll do is give this a light buff on the felt wheel just to take any burrs out and to give it a little bit more and I know it's kinda hard to tell from looking at it on the video 
but I like to give it a high gloss polish prior to having it plated. This will be plated in gold, so it'll look real nice when it's done. And basically this video is so that Mark can see the process of what the engraving uh, process is for each of these designs. Now there's a bunch of them on this flange. I'm only going to video just this one just so you can see what's involved. takes a little bit of patience this lip here tends to get in my way for, for some of the angles so I have to be real cautious that I don't bottom the tool out on the top of that edge when I'm starting the cut or you get a slip but a little slip here or there gives a little bit of what I'm going to call character to the engraving process and to the final piece There's that top, that one little top pot of this done. And now I'm going to move on to other, other pieces here. Let me just make an adjustment. I want to make sure you can see everything. Right about there, I think. Because I'm moving my work all the time. I'm not sure if it's going to show up perfectly on the camera or in the video. But hopefully you'll be able to see the the tip of the of the tool doing its work. Although I tend to think my my knuckles might get in the way at times. These are the fine shading details on this pattern that I designed for this banjo. The most difficult part about the hand engraving is how you hold your work. If you've got a good way of holding the work, then the, the engraving processes uh, makes it a little bit easier. Sometimes when you have a hard time holding the work, it makes it much more difficult to engrave it because you want complete control all of the time. Almost slipped right there. I keep my eye on the time on this because I, I don't want to go over 10 minutes. I 
that's as long as I want the video to last for. This cut here is particularly difficult because of the angle of the of the curve here. So I've got to start high and bring it low as I'm turning it because each of these cuts is curved. Some people will argue that the curved cuts are easier than a straight cut and other people will argue that a straight cut is easier than a curved cut but I'm doing both a curved cut on a curved surface and there's nothing easy about it. All right, now let's see. I'm going to get it over this way. Where am I here? Yep. I'm just hoping the detail of the engraving shows up in the video. Because these are very fine lines. And there you go. Let me let me uh, stop this for a second, and I'll show you some detail. This is the pattern that I just engraved on this edge. And as you can see, that light is a little bit too bright. Let me move the camera a little bit. Back off a little. And I'm just going to turn this, so you can see that each one takes me roughly 10-15 minutes to do. There's a lot of them on a flange. And here's how I like to sign my work. My name is Steve Caddick and I'm a hand engraver.